Hello, Libra. Welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul. If Libra is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your tarot card reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. Uh, it's totally free. It doesn't cost you anything. If there's anything you would like me to pray over, or meditate upon, or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Libra, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And... Princess of Swords. Interesting. We're going to have to put this into some context. This, I'm kind of getting the feeling that there is, um, that somebody's like, like pulling on your clothes, like trying to get your attention. You know, that somebody is trying to kind of distract you. You're, you're, you're focusing, but there's something else that's pulling at you. Yeah. Let's see what's going on here. Ah. Look at that, Ten of Pentacles. Well, this is going to make you very happy. Um, somebody is trying to really, it, it's like there's this nagging energy that's pulling you, pulling you, pulling you, trying to show you the pot of gold that's right at your feet. But I feel like you're, you're very distracted by something else in your life that you are... Interesting, yeah. You're, there's kind of this stubborn energy here where it's just like um, you're focused on something and you have all your attention on something, but there's this little nagging little something at your feet pulling on your clothes or something to show you the pot of gold that is right, right in front of you. Okay, it could be that you're looking for an answer and um, it's coming from an unexpected source, right? It's just this little nagging energy trying to show you where the gold is. Right now, we've got the two of pentacles, we've got the queen of wands, we've got the three of cups, or the three, three, and three, the nine of cups. We've got the lust or strength card. We've got the eight of wands, the star, the tower, and an ace of pentacles. Very nice. Very nice. Um, maybe this nagging energy is just something in the back of your mind that's trying to show you, hey, there's, there's a better way to do this, or the success that you're after is kind of not where you think it is, right? We've got a 10 and an ace. We've got an ending and a beginning. This is the, this is the jackpot that you've been waiting for, right? This is that big win that you really need in order to, 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 um, to continue your work, but on a higher plane. Now, I don't like to really call this starting again or a new path or a new beginning. Um, because I, I look at the tens and the aces as very interchangeable. This is like a circle, right? Where's the starting point? You don't know. Where's the finish line? Where's the, um, where's the center? Where's the middle of that circle? You, we don't know. Um, so I look at these two cards as being a continuation. Okay? It's a continuation of something, but on a higher plane. And that's what this... This nagging, uh, and it, it could be literally a, a person in your life. It could be, um, I'm kind of getting a younger energy, and they're just trying to like get your attention. Like they're just tugging on your clothes, saying, look over here, look over here, look over here. And you're saying, stop, wait a minute, I'm busy. I'm focused on something very, very important here. Um, but this energy keeps pulling at you and says, no, look over here. And it's spirit. And Spirit is trying to show you this jackpot, this pot of gold, this really big win. This, there's an opportunity. This is, this is right in front of you. All you have to do is reach down and grab it. And it's going to change everything for you. It's going to allow you to continue your life's work, your destiny, your purpose, your mission in life on that higher plane. Right? On that higher plane. I feel like you're very busy trying to Follow your happiness, trying to follow your bliss, trying to have this kind of rich experience of life. The means to do so are right here in front of you, but you just must look down. Not even down, just sideways. You're so busy looking up at this ideal, you know, this, this happiness card, 
What we need is right here in front of us. And this is going to allow us the power, the magical ability then to create whatever, whatever this is, whatever the continuation of your work is. Okay, because the, the lust or strength card here, this is your ability to create whatever it is that you need, to pull it out of thin air, right? To pull it right out of the spiritual realm and manifest it. And this is the resource to do that. Let's say this is money, and this is what you need to use that money for. Now there's no limit. Now there's no restriction, right? It's, it's kind of a blank check, these two. Now, the Ten of Pentacles is also that, that picture of your best life, that perfection that you're looking for. Or maybe, maybe the Ten of Pentacles is the completion of a particular project. And maybe you've been struggling for a while with kind of how to finish something, right? So that you can continue on with that Ace of Pentacles on a higher plane, you know. But we don't know how to finish this. It's like you're writing a book and you just don't know how to end it. You just keep writing and writing and writing and writing. Um, eventually, you have to write the last chapter. And this could be anything. It could be a work thing. It could be a project. It could be a relationship. It could be a spiritual quest, a creative project. I don't know. But we're looking for that, that perfect ending so that we can continue on on that higher plane, right? Where we can start something new, if you want to look at, at it that way, so that we can begin the next thing. Okay, let's select the mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. This is a random card from the Smith Waite Tarot. And we're going to set it down right over here. We're going to put Tiny Bob Ross right there on top. Happy little Bob. Uh, we're not going to look at that card until the very end. But it will tie everything together and it will give us our confirmation. All right. If at any point during the reading you get a hunch about that card, you feel like you know what it is, put your prediction down in the comments. Right. Let's do it together as an interactive group exercise of intuition. Okay. Let's look around the room here. We've got uh, major, major, major. We've got these three major arcana cards. Right. This is the ability for you to um, follow your life's purpose and have that breakthrough that we're trying to accomplish. And this is, this is us over here with this fire. This is fire, fire, fire. We're trying to kind of force this breakthrough, um, and that's not, that's not really the way. Right? We can't force something like this. We can't make this happen. This is something that has to kind of come um, a little bit more naturally. And I think that this is what Spirit's trying to tell you through this kind of annoying, lingering, nagging energy, this little voice or this little, uh, this little angel or devil on your shoulder trying to tell you, hey, just look at what you already have. Look, look straight ahead and you'll see the answer that you're looking for. You'll see that pot of gold that you need. And it could be that aha moment. This could be literally the, the financial resources that you need um, to, to continue the work that you're doing. Right? So we've got these three major arcana cards. This is kind of the creation, and this is the destruction, and this is the purpose behind it all. We're building up, we're tearing down. We're building up, we're tearing down. That's your work. Well, maybe you're in some sort of, uh, I don't know, architecture or something I don't know, something like this. Um, but there is this need for something to be, to be wrapped up or to be finished. The finishing touches on something, right? And we very often talk about the Ten of Pentacles and we say, this is the picture of your best life. And we always say that the, the closer you get to this, the more you're going to have to change things and alter it and draw like a new picture. It's going to change as you go, right? Uh, but in your case right now, I feel like that's kind of the issue. Uh, the issue is that you keep writing an ending, let's say, but then you keep writing more. You keep changing it too much where we're not able to actually say, okay, it's done, close it, seal it, mail it to the publisher. Yeah, it's the constant revision that can be, every card has light and shadow. So I feel like this might be us revising things too much. This ideal, we've got this picture-perfect thing. This is what I want. 
And we're getting there, we're getting there, we're getting there, and we're just saying, no, it's got to be a little bit different, a little bit more, change this, change that. We're editing and editing and editing too much. Eventually, we got to say, okay, it's done. Okay. And in that context, maybe this princess of, of um, swords is your, that little editor. Right? It's this, the, the scissors that are just a little bit out of control. We just keep cutting away and editing and editing and editing. Not realizing that, that maybe things are perfect the way they are and we have to be done with it. And maybe we don't want this project, whatever it is, maybe you're writing this book, maybe we don't want that to, to end because that's where we feel we're really living our best life, where we are just experiencing this bliss and joy that we're doing our life's work. And so we don't want this to end. We're trying to prolong it and we just keep saying, no, it's not ready yet. I'm gonna keep editing, keep editing. Because maybe we're afraid that once this is over, we're gonna lose this happiness that we've got up here. Well, I think you're gonna realize that this happiness is through this process. It's not the process of clinging to this one present day project but by continuing your work but then on a higher plane this f finishing this project sealing it up and mailing it to the publisher doesn't mean that your work is over it means that you get to start again or continue but on a higher plane right it's a spiral and you you keep making progress that's how we generate this happiness so I think you are going to be very happy once you realize that this is perfect as it is. This is, you've done enough here. And this is, again, that kind of, that spirit's nagging at you and saying, look, the jackpot's right there. Just, just take it. Just, this one's fine. This is, this is perfect. And then we're making this transition. Here's the two of pentacles. We're transitioning now into that higher plane, into the continuation of our work on that higher plane. And that's really where the magic is. That's where you now get this experience that, um, that you're kind of in control of things. That it's up to you what kind of experience, what kind of meaning and value, and what kind of happiness you experience in life. It's not so dependent on what this earth energy is. This is the vessel of it. This is just the, the outer form of your happiness and your bliss. And so now, with this luster strength energy in the future, this is the realization that this is what's important, the happiness, the value and meaning of what you do. The earth energy is going to always be changing. And that's why we've got the ten and the ace. We've got the beginning and the end, and the beginning and the end, the continuation. It's a cycle. It's just one thing after another. It's creation and destruction, creation and destruction. That's the process that brings you the fulfillment of your life's work the fulfillment of your purpose and the following of your bliss. It doesn't matter the outer form. This is the book. Finish it. Be done with that book. Go write the next one. Go paint the next picture. Go climb the next mountain. Build up the next uh, skyscraper or build the next bridge, whatever it is. And it's through that, the, the fluctuation, it's through this two of pentacles that we really experience this kind of happiness. And once you realize this, this is going to make you very, very happy. Because then our happiness is not dependent on this physical form. But our happiness is then dependent instead on us being involved in that process of, you know, uh, uh, of constant change of building up and tearing down, which is the nature of the universe, right? And Spirit's trying to get this message to you. Your real happiness is here real and true happiness. Yeah. Now, I'd like to talk about the path of the serpent here. And as we do this, I'd also like to ask for your subscription. If you haven't subscribed yet, I think you should. Uh, it's free, doesn't cost anything. And that way I can send notifications to you when your next reading comes out. All right. So we've got the, uh, the, the eight of wands here. Um, I like that we have eight, nine, and ten. The eight is really the, it's, it's kind of a creative diversity, right? It's you really um, now not limiting yourself, not limiting your, your creative energy to just whatever this earth form is. We're not, again, we're not dependent on the details of the thing. 
now you're free to create in many different things because you realize that your happiness isn't dependent on the physical structure. This is just the vessel that contains your happiness and your creativity. This vessel can change. It's something that this is earth. We can tear it down and build it back up. Right? We recycle these materials, which is the cycle here. This is what this card's all about. So there's now this creative freedom, and you realize that you're not just you're not just a painter, you're not just a writer, you're not just a musician, that your creative energy can take many forms. And it is through the diversity of that expression that you achieve that happiness. And that's the realization of your magical ability. And not many people ever have this realization. See? Not many people discover this secret. So this is you, I think, with a lot of, a lot of creative energy. And there might be even, um, you know, part of this, if there is some sort of apprehension here, it's the idea of not wanting this current project to end because then we've got to pick the next one. And then, you know, there's kind of this a little bit of anxiety of what do I choose next? Because you are multi-talented. You do have a lot of interests and a lot of creative energy. How do you pick the next project? So we cling to this one. I'm happy doing this. I love writing this book. I'm going to write this book forever, right? Because I know once that book is done, then I've got to find something else. Then I've got to start something new. Well, that's our, that's our view of the Ace of Pentacles being this is over, this is something new. Well, let's look at it as a continuum. It's a constant flow of energy. It's not that and then this. It's all one flow. It's all one energy, right? It's a continuity of your creative energy. And it doesn't matter what form it takes. You know, I mean, it does in a relative way, but ultimately it doesn't matter as long as it is you in this process and you feel that happiness doing it. It could be anything. You know, it could be anything. Um, we've got the star card here in the position of the environment. I feel like this is uh, very much you having and manifesting you, the, your life's work. The meaning and purpose of your life is very clear to you. And you're realizing that it is not this, writing a book. That's the detail. That's just the form that it takes. That's not your essence. That's not your destiny or your purpose or your meaning of life. It's something in which you find meaning and value. But it is, it is not your soul. It is not your star. And I always say that our, our destiny, our bliss, our will, our purpose is not in the details. It's not what we do, but how and why. It's a continuum of many different things and activities, many different hats that we'll wear, many different jobs or roles or parts that we play. Okay? And that is your, that is your star here in the environment. We're learning that. And we get to the tower card and we realize that, and it's, it's a realization, it's a revelation with that eye. That eye is wide open. That's your third eye in that card. It's the realization... Um, it's the letting go of the physical forms that we cling to, the earth energy. You know, it's kind of like, well, if I'm not writing this book, then who am I? I have no identity. We feel that the, the, the world is shattered, that our, our sense of self is shattered. This image that we have of our self, of our identity, because we're so identified with what we do. You know, um, you're not just a writer. I'm not just a tarot reader you know that's one that's one facet of our identities but that's not our essence it's not my my life's work you know it's something more subtle than that i could put this energy into other things it would still that's my essence this is just the physical form through which i'm conveying my essence to you and that's what i want you to do right that's what I want you to do. And that's this next card. That's the continuation, the, the continuum of the manifestation on a higher plane, on a higher, a higher rung of the spiral. Yeah. Let's look at the mystery card. Um, I, I would like to see some, well, maybe some more water energy. Maybe we need like, um, 
We need something in the middle. We need like a six. I want a six of something because we have, again, we have uh, eight, nine, ten. And we have the ace and the ten. So maybe something in the middle, a six of something. Yeah. If you have a prediction, you can put it down in the comments. Queen of Swords. Um, queen of Swords, we've got the Queen of Wands. It's uh, At least now this person's kind of looking horizontally, looking sideways now, like looking at what's right in front of them, rather than, um, you know, kind of uh, having this, this more this more fixed or stubborn kind of uh, idea of things. Yeah. We saw the queen, we saw this idea of water, um, which is the essence, which is this kind of the feeling of things. But we see the, the um, we see the water coming out of this fire energy now. So it's kind of like the meaning and value is in what I create. And that's, you know, that's what we've been talking about. With the queen of swords, it's kind of like we're, we're maybe rethinking that a little bit. We're learning to follow some of this air energy. See, now now the Queen of Swords is at least listening to what Spirit's telling us through this kind of nagging. Um, it's just this little whisper in our ear. It's something tugging at our clothes or tugging at our, uh, at our mind, you know, the little angel or devil on our shoulder. We're at least paying attention now, right? We're, we're, we're listening. And that, I think, is a really, really good first step. I think you're going to be really, really happy Libra, I really do. I think when, when we harmonize ourselves with this kind of energy and this idea of the, the continuum of, of what we're doing, um, and I don't know what this is. I don't know if you're actually a writer, you know, but there's something that you're, you're not wanting to, to end, something that we don't want to finish because then it's like then we kind of lose that identity and we've got to find it again, find something else again, you know. And I don't know what it is. It could be a relationship. It could be a career. It could be a particular job. It could be a particular art project or something, you know, that you're working on. That we are just like, we just want to keep working on it because that's where we now we feel comfortable doing that. Yeah. Um, I do want to do one thing before we go, and that is one of these botanical inspiration cards. Kind of an oracle card, kind of an affirmation card. Um, just to end on kind of a different note, you know. What do we have? The peony, prosperity and compassion. Prosperity depends more on wanting what you have than having what you want. That's kind of interesting, huh? I like that. I think that that works well. Prosperity depends more on wanting what you have than on having what you want. And it, it has the, a hint, it has a suggestion of the physical form of things, right? Not being, um, not being the really important thing, right? Wanting what you have. Well, it does, then it doesn't matter what you have. It's the feeling that we find in it, the value that we find in it, the meaning that's behind it, rather than kind of having it the other way around of, um, you know, having this ideal and then... Um, um, having what we want, right? Having this ideal and then um, settling for nothing less than the kind of perfect thing that we're in that we can identify with and uh, a whole thing. I, we don't need to get back into it, but I think this is a good reading for you. And um, I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of distracted in my own mind right now. I apologize for that. Um, but I feel that there is... Um, there's a lot of energy around you right now, you know, and I'm kind of getting a flood of all of these different kinds of um, messages. And I, I wonder if that has something to do with this, because at the beginning, I started to feel that there was like a younger female energy, like literally like a young, like a kid kind of pulling at your at your clothes, you know, and I didn't want to mention anything about that. But I don't know if you've lost something or someone in your life. Um, that maybe we could say is a younger female energy, okay? And I don't know that we really need to go down that road, but that could be part of this Ten of Pentacles thing that we are, we're not wanting to f let that be final, right? We're not wanting to kind of, you know, um, say, okay, that's that's happened and that's now in the past, right? It's not something that we we really want to let be over yet. Okay, and I don't 
I don't want to go down that road too much with you. If that's meant for you, you know what I'm talking about. And it's a very emotional thing, and I, I don't think we need to spend too much time on it, but I think that could be part of it for someone out there, okay? Uh, anyway, we are going to do an extended reading, and uh, I'd like you to stick around. Uh, there's a link in the corner. There's a link down below. Uh, new readings for Libra every Wednesday and Saturday, but I am here every day. You can come see me again tomorrow. If you haven't subscribed yet, um, please do. It's totally free. It costs you nothing. And uh, leave a comment. Let me know where in the world you're watching from. All right. I want you to know that you are the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you and I love you. And we're all in this together.